Ke dadi. Yo nga transfer la sto. Ya transfer la sto. Ha code ni nje. Okay. Por sa ID sorto. Forest de Biro. Gambia tonkon na no mbari a bere. Ka, berim ko ena fo kato. Bari si kodo ki no kato ni fo bolo mbla be. 56 branches mo la soda Gambia ja. Ha? Ka, Gambia kono ani Gambia e banta la bankol. Nko kodo ki a bere. Kodo si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi la ta mem mena kodi to koto ni kodi maro. Jannom number one di nyonda. Andum fana nata anoda enterprise sotale. Wolam wolam nyindi ko domorol fana ngol fana be firale de dadi mani domorol di fana be teat. Gambia dau da yalo ma kum fa kendol sotale di. Ha e wo mo yo diat ha. A pelen ta. Yo ka ni na lafta nyela kendo le binaji. Yalo buka ni na kuol la barka ba. Yalo ndel chosa no lo. A barka. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. Don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Biliomatic Printing Machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. Holding tax. Coming, I have found in Yami. We have now got a member of the contract jolta. Kabo contract on the jolta. Ika do who will make it? And if Ika safari to me mix up life. At the whole kono technical or the consultancy services. Si dula ke moro si dula tak Ika we le bondi gambia dingol taro. And if si dula tani lulu we le kabo safari la taro. Muni ano ko we le make gambia dingol taro. Mi ye ta do ko la Ika from me contract team. We le nyanda kanya na mojo taka gambia le office bunda to muni ano ko we le be maraving na na mo la puke nyala. Andu joro anyanda kera karo mengi ya kuntu kabo ilo joro Wala karo mengi ya wadu mwa janni ala tita ni ulo ya timali Saya mune mwende la nafari uwa Ile nafamu mwende ya wala mwende kwa 
Ninki baro pota nalie Gambia Revenue Authority le. Nimi lafta kuma koyo shoto la ila na moto ikafamie with holding tax. Akata yefuta GRA la bunda ato minshuti ya tela. Gambia Revenue Authority ibe namu kani wala bankola nyato tale. This week, the opinion poll survey 2023 for the local government elections coming next week are out, hot from the fires. We will meet members from the Center for Policy Research and Strategic Studies, SEPRAS, who are well respected and well known for their accurate projection of Gambian elections. They have done it again and only this morning they came out with their survey um, on the and local government elections, like I said, which is happening on uh, Saturday. The survey uh, spoke to a lot of respondents and it looked into many, many, many issues so, such as social democratic characteristics, ethnicity, geographical description or distribution, voting behavior, and it also came out with some interesting key takeaways such as potential voters' intention and also perception perception of voters as to the likely candidates to win in the regions we will come to all that but first let me introduce uh, the panel the respected members of the uh, research center of course are in the studios and they are they include to my far right uh, dr hamidu jawara welcome and of course the executive director of suppress uh, lamin dampa welcome thank you very much Demba Ali Jao, veteran journalist, is with me and he will help me pull questions to uh, these eminent panelists as to how they arrive at uh, these projections. Thank you very much, Lamin. And well, yeah. thank you. Good. When they did it last time, when they went up to the presidential election, they created a lot of headlines and, of course, a lot of, uh, I mean, different, different opinions. They themselves came on a flag, lambasted for. Uh, daring to project results that uh, various people take to be not favorable to them. But in the end, they won everybody's admiration. That is, of course, surprise. Now, before anything, let me go straight to uh, Mr. Lamin Um How did you come about um, with your this new poll on the local government elections? Before we tell people um, the key takeaways. Welcome, and once again, um, tell us too, uh, how did this poll, uh, when you started, and uh, how hard it been? Um, <coughs> thank you very much, Mr. Tam, and thank you to the viewers. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, to um, on the brunch on our, you know, latest opinion poll dissemination that we have just done. We just found the dissemination at the NANA Conference Center, and we are here today to discuss about our findings. Actually, um, you know, um, after our first opinion poll, that is the modern one, uh, in, in a run-up to the presidential National Assembly elections, you know, <coughs> there were a lot of, you know, calls on us whether this time around we are going to do any opinion poll on the local government election. Mm -hmm. um, currently, CEPRAS is uh, um, doing uh, a project okay. dubbed Strengthening um, you know transparency and accountability in the local government okay and you know and part of that project we have this uh, opinion poll mm 
Yeah. You know, actually, we intended to do for the local councillors as well, but uh, because of resources, you we want to you know concentrate on the, the, mayor, the mayors and the, and the chairman, you know, elections. Okay. Um, actually, um, the team that work on this opinion poll, as usual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my eminent colleagues, Dr. Jaura is with me here, yeah. uh, Associate Professor Banna Saone and Dr. Job, Mustafa Jobati and Mr. Yusufa F.J. Diba, mm -hmm. myself, work on this um, opinion poll and the previous ones as well. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, knowing that, um, the, in fact, I think we were overstretched okay. because the nom we can only do this uh, poll after the nomination. Yeah. And if you look at it, the, after the nomination, and today is, you know, just, if, if, you know, a week or, you know, a few days, about 10 days. Okay. So actually, immediately after the nomination closes and the correction were done, mm -hmm. we train uh, about 17 enumerators and three supervisors, mm -hmm. you know, on data collection, you know, taking them through on our methodology and, of course, the, the sampling, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, data collection techniques. We train them, you know, for a two-day and a pilot to test our instruments. Those are the questions that we, you know, we, we prepare. Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, immediately after the nomination, they started the, the data collection. And this data collection is done through telephone call. Okay. You know, so it took us for six days. And of course, the analysis was three days. We only finished last night. And today we, you know, presented our finding, you know, at the conference center at Nana. Dr. Jawara. I understand you. You hardly had any <laughs> any sleep there last night. Yeah. So how? Uh, what are your reflections on this one? Um, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cham. Uh, good afternoon to you and um, your viewers uh, on on the brunch. Uh, I will join my colleague to say that we are actually happy to be here to share with you. Uh, some of the findings that um, we have um, arrived at from our latest opinion uh, opinion pool. Uh, actually, the rundown to the findings was um, hectic, uh, as explained by you know uh, as explained by the uh, executive director of Cyprus, uh, Mr. Lamin, uh, Mr. Lamin Damfa. Um, yeah, so he also mentioned uh, some of the reasons why uh, we do. Uh, opinion polling uh, and which uh, we have started um, from the presidential elections of 2021 mm -hmm. uh, to the parliamentary elections that were held afterwards uh, and you know we are now doing this for the mayoral and, and, and chairmanship um, um, elections. Uh, I think all of these elections are very important uh, in our democratization uh, process uh, and you know if you are talking about democracy uh, being able to um, get people's opinion uh, and, and share that with uh, policymakers or politicians uh, it's it's very important uh, so that you know when messages are being given uh, particularly in election periods uh, that they are based on you know evidence anchored on uh, the perception uh, of, of, of voters, yeah. all right, uh, so that uh, in some way we can ensure that the elections are based on issues uh, and, and, and not sentiments, uh, as it is often the case uh, in, in, in our elections. So from that perspective, I think uh, this opinion pool, um, it's quite important, uh, as it would contribute towards uh, making sure uh, that, um, you know, we uh, bring to to um, the forefront uh, of the elections, the opinion of people uh, regarding how the whole process would unfold. Uh, thank you. Good. Um, Yao, before I go into ask the specific questions as to where the areas this uh, poll looked at, uh, what's your impression of it with the Sephras from the beginning? Um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's quite interesting, and I can imagine the amount of work you know that must have gone into this kind of thing. Because, you know, Gambians are not used to opinion polls or something, and to get 
to elicit this information from the people definitely would not be easy because how many people would be willing even to talk to you either on the telephone or even directly about you know their intentions to vote for who and all those things so uh, i mean we can only commend the, the separate people for you know for taking all the time to bring us this kind and, of and because we've seen, yeah we've seen what happened in their last polls and you know they were very uh, well um, uh, very accurate, accurate in many, many, most areas in so many people respect. expect that you know definitely they have gained a lot of uh, respect and uh, administration from Gambians who you know we only hope and pray that you know this thing will this trend will continue in their case I know they will be subjected to all kinds of you know I mean bashing by people who have been you know uh, who expected probably to win and they see in the report that you know they are not likely to win you know i mean because we saw that happen the last time yeah. during the presidential elections and i am sure it will continue good yeah. now let's go to mr damfa mr damfa take us through uh, what areas did you look into i know the key takeaways as you call it are going to be interesting for example the possession of likely candidates to win in the regions who will be very much interesting but what areas did you look at um, there's also the issue of local government uh, inquiry that has just started, like the Commission of Inquiry. So take us through what areas did you look at, at the, in this poll? Um, thank you very much. I mean, um, I think this uh, poll, even though the most um, talk about um, issue was the likely candidate to win, mm -hmm. but actually we look at a um, host of issues. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from the, the, the demographic characteristics we look at in terms of you know, ethnicity, the age bracket, and so on. Yeah. You know, the voting behavior. We actually look at um, the local government issues. For mm -hmm. example, you know, the treatment of candidates during the nomination process. Mm -hmm. The most important issues candidates should address. Mm -hmm. You know, we also look at um, in terms of you know voting, like the intention to vote, mm -hmm. the likely candidate to win. We also look at um, you know because. Of course, the issue of vote buying, you remember yes. the National Human Rights Commission has made a statement on that, on that allegation. Yeah. So we also ask that question, mm -hmm. the issue of vote buying and, and so on. We also ask about um, the financial inducement of other parties' candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, we have seen some defects on people have, you know, been nominated and have, you know, eventually, and withdrawing. you know, withdrawing. Yeah. So we wanted to know, mm -hmm. you know, whether they have been financially induced or not. And most importantly, you know, we also look at the Commission of Inquiry on the local government councils mm -hmm. as well. So we wanted to know whether it was for, you know, accountability purpose and transparency or whether it is for uh, witch hunt mm -hmm. or politically motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, we also interested to know the timing of, 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 the, of this commission. So, I mean, you know, our this report has unveiled, you know, the finding. Of course, I, will, I want to add, it is a perception of how people you know see that so you know this report has highlighted among other things some of these very important you know, issues let's go to the takeaways uh, because they are the most important things then let, let, you, would you want us to start with potential voters intention or we go straight to the potential voters perception and likely candidate we go there, there because or maybe maybe it's important that um yeah, Dr. Jonah talk about um, our methodology oh because okay He's this is important good, because good, yes. um in the past and that's what we i came, said how you arrive at this yeah we okay. came under you know heavy criticism on methodology, but i mean doctor will be able to explain to doctor you. the floor is yours how yeah. do you come to this conclusion yeah um thanks uh once again mm -hmm. uh, um, when you do um um, or when you want to collect information mm -hmm. uh, on on people, okay, uh, the ideal thing to do is to pull on everybody mm -hmm. or everyone, okay. Uh, in this case, um, the best uh, uh, for us is to pull on every registered uh, every registered voter, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but again, um, if you look at the number of registered voters. It's it's quite huge. Ah, nearly a million. Know, exactly. So over nine hundred thousand people uh, are actually registered uh, in the Gambia, uh, and these are all potential voters. Uh, so we don't have the resources to pull on everyone uh, um, in this in this population. Uh, so scientifically, um, what is recommended is to try to uh, um, have a sample. Okay, and it is important for that sample to be representative of the population mm -hmm. of interest, uh, which in our case is um, the potential uh, potential voters. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, but also um, if you want to sample, there are certain things that you have to uh, 
uh, you have to work with. There are certain tools that you have to work with. Um, one, you need to have a frame uh, where you would pick those respondents that you want to uh, that you want to talk to. Okay, uh, and that pool um, or that um, that frame uh, should be something that um, captures. Uh, the population that you are interested in. So for our case, um, you know, data was a challenge uh, because I remember from the first opinion poll, um, there was one time we even tried to see whether we can um, get all the potential voters uh, uh, through the IEC, yeah. uh, and and we and were told that IEC this <laughs> exactly that this they, is they told you what it for other purposes. Exactly, Yao had, <laughs> had a similar experience. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So we mm. couldn't we couldn't do that, and you know we had to crack our heads and see you know what might be a good alternative. Uh, <coughs> even to the RDD. Exactly, even the RDD. Yeah. The random digital dialing. We we talked about that as well. Uh, exactly, okay. exactly. So. In that process, like he said, we thought of all, um, a lot of other approaches that we can use, uh, but we resorted to using um, the most recent integrated household survey uh, that was conducted by GBOS. Yes. Uh, and this was a survey um, that is based on the updated census, right? Uh, data. Right. Of 20. Is, is that not overdue? The country should have been one in April. Exactly, exactly. So there is talks that, you know. Yes. Um, there should be one this year, yeah. right? Uh, I know the constraint. It's um, yeah, I understand yeah. resources. Yeah. Okay, uh, and they've decided to push it towards the end of the year, yeah. uh, according to the latest information mm -hmm. uh, that Jibos has um, reported. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we use um, right now. What they do is to update the previous census based on the surveys that they do, uh, and and that to a great extent, it's also very very reliable mm -hmm. all right uh, and this is what was done with the integrated household survey uh, of, of, of 2018 uh, like I said it was a nationwide survey uh, also representative okay. all right and then covered um, 14,000 I think 191 uh -huh. uh, respondents right okay. uh, but the respondents were mainly head of um, head House of households, households. all right uh, so that's why we Sometimes, if you read the report, would see that um, we talk about uh, interview with households, households. you know, uh, because these were the um, the individuals that um, you know responded to to that survey. So from that, we try to also determine what is a representative sample, mm -hmm. right? From that um, from that population, uh, and and this you use scientific methods. Mm -hmm. uh, in in our case, we used. Uh, uh, something called the Taro Yamani formula okay. uh, to to determine that, and that gave us um, 1,280 uh, respondents, uh, something that would be representative of the population. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and to select this respondent, we go through multiple stages. Uh, of course, you have to organize them into um, um, regions, and then down to local government areas mm -hmm. and to districts, uh, and then from each district, you pick. Uh, a representative sample uh, from that district, right? Uh, using what we call uh, probability proportionate to size uh, sampling strategy, all right? Uh, and and you know at the final stages you randomly sample respondents from from districts. So in our case we had um, 38 districts um, across the country, right? Uh, and in um, Banjul. Uh, Kanifing and Brikama, mm -hmm. we actually included all the districts, all right? All right. Uh, because we were aware that you know um, um, the race in these areas uh, might be might be tight. I think they have constituents rather than the districts yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but mean, when it comes to voting, mm -hmm. normally we use constituencies. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and yeah, but th there's just a little difference also, yes. you know, between constituencies and districts. Different districts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I know the, data, districts. the data we are using was based on districts. districts. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we understand where those consequences are. Ah, For example, yeah, yeah, like yeah. in Combo Central, you have yeah. Bekama North, Bekama South. Yeah. We are yeah. aware of yeah. those things. And okay. then Combo North, you know, San Emen Treng, or you know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so, so the, the, I think the um, important maybe uh, message with regards to this is if you look at the um, the district level, mm -hmm. it's higher than the constituency level, level yeah. right? So you can find all the constituencies mm -hmm. within the 48, so within the 48 districts, right? So correct. if it was the other way around, yeah. then you could run into yeah. into troubles, right? Because you might leave out certain 
uh, certain constituencies, right? Uh, yeah. So in this case, all of them were considered, and then you know we took a representative sample from you know from the districts, mm -hmm. and this is what we pull on, uh, and then you know conducted interview with those that were selected, uh, and the interviews were done remotely uh, using telephones. Uh, yeah, so that's that's how we went about. Wonderful. It. Yeah, well, your impression on that before we go, come to the findings. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, as I said, this is going to be tough. I mean, okay, I'm still not very sure as to what criteria they use actually to select individuals. You know, as to um, well, he was trying to explain, but it's still a little bit tricky for me okay. as to you know what method how do you determine this the person i'm going to talk to and then you know i mean about this person most person. of them are mostly yeah. house, yeah. house I mean, yeah maybe i can yeah. explain that a yeah, bit yeah. more yeah. 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 right uh, so when you go to a district mm -hmm. all right uh, i mean you have households in those districts mm -hmm. okay uh, so what we do is to randomly select a household in a district mm -hmm. okay and that is done scientifically right so you go to excel you have all these districts mm -hmm. and then you know um, using the random sampling uh, formula that is in there okay. all right i mean you uh, attach random numbers mm -hmm. to these households okay. okay and then you know uh, you order the random numbers and maybe uh, you know based on your target right mm -hmm. if you are to take 34 respondents in that district you take the first 34 mm -hmm. all right do you, and then do, this do you concentrate on the household heads or you know anybody oh okay you know, yeah, so yeah, in that area, that's, yeah, another, another that's, important. that's important, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is, you know, if, because their telephone numbers are actually in there, mm -hmm. all right? So you pick those that have telephone numbers, all right, and you call them. So if you reach a respondent, uh, there are background information that you ask uh, on that respondent. And one of those things is whether the respondent has a voter's card, mm -hmm. Okay, what is the likelihood of the respondent uh, to vote in the upcoming elections? Okay, uh, and then you also look at um, their intentions uh, in terms of voting. What? All right. So when you are doing the analysis, you focus on those that you think are likely to come out okay. to vote. Okay, and they have voters card and things like that. All right. So if you go to the report, you know, on the social demographic characteristics demographic, yeah. mm -hmm. all right you would see some of this uh, information in there so yeah. that's that's yeah. that's what May, we maybe to add uh, yeah. because yeah. the point he's trying to put across like mm -hmm. are we only targeting the household head exactly. yeah. interview yeah. no i mean um, you know the the way we set up i mm -hmm. mean doctor would say you know we use our you know we use a survey solution and then you know the questionnaires are operated in the tablet mm -hmm. now the 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 monitors will know at what point will i interview a male uh, respondent, oh, a female respondent, yeah. and a young one as well. Oh. You understand? Even though we do run into some problems in mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. even though if you look at the uh, the voting population for 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 women in the country is about more than fifty two percent. Yeah. So major. our target in this data collection is to get that ah, that percentage. Nice. But unfortunately, but even fortunately for us this time around, mm -hmm. we had a better percentage for women respondent. And it's about thirty nine percent. Previously, we had about 28, 30, 30 percent. Okay. So even though our target was to have 52 yeah. percent, but uh, we end up having 39. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are some, you know, you know, reluctances, you know, yeah, from yeah. the, like, you know, the household like, head, yeah, not to yes, allow maybe the wife to, to respond talk to somebody. To talk to and so on. <laughs> yeah, and, and maybe I can also mostly, but if household, only wouldn't like. <laughs> um, uh, uh, if you are a surveyor, really, I mean, you mm -hmm. try to ensure that um, you use uh, the best approach, right, as much as you can. So it might not be perfect in terms of capturing, you know, all the things that you are interested in, okay? Uh, but there is some degree of error that you also allow, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Uh, and, you know, in our case, uh, for instance, our sampling error, mm -hmm. it's between plus... Uh, uh, and minus three percent. Three percent. Ah, okay. uh, so, so, you, so obviously, you more, more or less, you right? are. Accurate. But I also want to come a bit on the households. Yeah. Right. So if we look at our context, mm. uh, um, you know, um, the household heads are actually quite important. Yes. Right. Mm. Even in influencing outcome of yes, it mostly exactly. Yeah, so yeah. you can find, for instance, that in a particular household, yeah. is the household head. Yeah. You know, who to I, some I, extent I have seen during this campaign exactly. Yes, a certain person who said, I have the votes 
the, uh, I mean, the voter's card for all my family is for you, it's for you. Exactly. I've so, seen that already. So, in yeah, interestingly, yeah. So, targeting so, house and hole, you yeah. know, house and head mm -hmm. in this uh, will give us a quiet uh, level of, you know, livery to reach out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you this know, might work bigger. in our context, might not work in other contexts, context, yeah. right? Where, you know, um, household heads don't have that much power in influencing decision mm -hmm. of people that lives within their household, Indeed. right? Uh, uh, so, that is, that is the thing. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's go to the to brass tasks now because people are listening. They want to know. Uh, so we go straight to I think to the potential uh, voters' perception on the likely candidate to win. Um, I think I guess in this column, what you're trying to say is um, these are the perception of voters on the candidate they think will win in the various regions. So we start with Banjul. Or do you want to have any preambles before this? Uh, well, the Maybe I just want to add, there are two important questions we ask. Okay. Intention to vote and the likely candidate to win. Win, yes. Intention so, to vote yes, and the likely, likely candidate to win. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I mean, these questions are asked because sometimes you might intend to vote for a particular candidate, mm -hmm. but in your mind, you think that even though I'm going to vote for that candidate, but the other candidate might win. So, that is why we deliberately ask those two different questions mm -hmm. and try to understand, Yes. you know, the passage of people on you know, both intention and the yes. likely candidate to win. So somebody might support uh, Lavin Cham, but he thinks Jawa will win. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that is that is the point I want to add. And then um, starting with uh, Banjul, for example, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's important to also understand. Yes. You know, in terms of uh, uncertainty, because okay. Okay. if you if you look let, at this, let me read what you said, there, mm -hmm. then you can explain. All right. You said Banjul, the incumbent UDP candidate Rohi Malik Law leads the likely to win with 26%. The NPP candidate Ibu Fai is trailing behind with 14% on the respondent's perception on the likely to win. About 61% of the potential electorate said they can't tell, indicating uncertainty and indecision among respondents in Banjul. So, those you have reached, 26% of them said likely Rohi Malik Law will win. 14% mm. uh, of them said Ibu Fai of the NPP will win. But then you said there are 61% who said they can't tell. Oh. So can we explain? Yeah, that is that is why I said um, the people of Banjul on this on this opinion poll find themselves at a crossroad. Yes. Because the can't tell is quite significant. 61%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So therefore you know this poll. That is why we are not making uh, we are not making a you know conclusively that um, uh, Rohimaiko is going to win. But if sixty one percent said they can't tell, they they did not either. In, in any case, they did not show either. Uh, also, where where are they going to vote? Yes. Yeah. So so that is so why undecided voters. Undecided voters. So that yeah. is why Banjul is open for any candidate to win. Okay. But you know I must add, despite those who really want to. Who have decided? Yes. You know, Rohim Malklo, you know, is the front runner. It's the front runner. Is the front runner with twenty six percent. Twenty six percent. You know, why Ibu Fai with fourteen percent. But it must be understood yeah. that the undesired voters is quite significant. Quite significant. And that could, you know, make a decision in yeah. you know when the actual elections, you know, come. But when it comes to likely to win in the possession of those you have contacted, the majority of them, twenty six percent said it's it's Rohi Malik law, really. Like, yes, yeah, likely. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's I, go. Oh, yes. Yeah, I just want to throw some light um, yeah. on those because yeah. they are important. Um, two of the most important indicators, uh, I think, in the in the survey. All right. Um, so, uh, voting intentions, you know, uh, uh, are like um, people's um, 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 yeah intention on who they they are going to vote for. Mm -hmm. uh, in the upcoming elections, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the likely to win, it's uh, a perception indicator, right? Mm -hmm. It's their perception indicator. regarding which candidate, um, which candidate will win, will win the elections, all right? And you said this includes people who might ne not necessarily support Rohi Malik Law in this case, yeah. but said they think he will win. Yeah, exactly. It can happen in other cases. Yeah, yeah. So this might be, you know, uh, also candidates of. Um, um, NPP, you know, who thinks, you know, um, Rohi Malik Lo has a better chance, right, of winning, of winning Banjo. So even though they intend to vote for, for Ibu, Fai. Ibu Fai, right, but they still oh. think that um, Rohi Malik Lo is going to win. Uh, and I think that in itself, it's also 
interesting, okay, interesting. right uh, because you have that someone perception yeah. uh, differs with the decision so that that he, he wants to want to, yes. he wants to make that's true right uh, so the way you navigate yeah. that person yes, right to be able to bring him or her yeah. on your side, side right it's 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 quite interesting uh, also right and and can tell it's 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 like very speak, high, yeah right one, yeah. Uh, and like he said you know to us that indicates that uh, actually there's a lot of noise yeah. you know uh, in in this, uh, in, this in this result if you look at uh, in, if you look at Banjo. so it it's it's not um, conclusive Crucial. exactly but at, the this, at this point but the Although perception the still says uh, UDP's Rohi Malik low list. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to say anything before we go to Brikama? Uh, I mean, uh, Dampa? Um No, I think uh, yes, Dr. Yeah, that's 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 make it. I mean, I think also just like he said, we've yeah. covered all the three consequences and districts in in in, in Banjo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's and go. also what yeah. we may my, we may uh, add is that yeah. you know uh, we have the data uh, and then you know there is a lot that we can do with it. Okay. Even on the undecided voters, okay. uh, it's where, possible to know where, they where are. the undecided voters are. Why didn't Why did you, you know, bring that? Uh, uh, why didn't you? Yeah, bring that? I mean because of the time, <laughs> the limited time that we had, yeah. so we had to. I mean, Go for the low hanging fruit, I uh, you know, rather than the high but hanging fruit. Our, our office is open. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to Brekama Area Council. You said the UDP candidate, Yankuba Davo, leads with 23% on the likely to win, while the NPP candidate, Sidi Serif Sise, has 22% support. Independent candidates, and there are many in this area, mm -hmm. and other parties add unpredictability to the race. 42% of respondents cannot tell who the likely winner will be. Thus, no meaningful conclusion can be made for Brikama because the percentage of cannot tell is substantial. What do you want to say here? Yes, I mean... From, from the layman, we'll say, okay, another, another potential favorable uh, you know, projection for UDP. <laughs> but then, if you read through, the, 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 the devil is in the details. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Brikama race course is one of the most trickiest ones. Mm. You know, you know this story okay. because it is the only region where the intention to vote and the likely to win the first ah. intention to vote. Yes, you know it was silly, she said. Yeah. You know that came on top, but the likely candidate to win, you know, to win is Yankuba. So I mean, if you look at the difference as well, is uh, yes. as Doctor said, is within you know the margin of error. Okay. You know the the difference is within. It's less than the yes. the you know the. The, the margin of error that oh. is plus or minus three. Okay, you understand. Yeah. So I mean, this explained uh, a lot about uh, Brikama. Okay. And to further understand it, because if you look at um, um, the, uh, the the West Coast, for example, mm -hmm. now it is one of the region where you have a lot of candidates vying. Yes, that's the. You area. know, but interestingly, the independent candidates mm -hmm. plus the PPP candidate. Mm -hmm. You know, together, I think their their percentage is less than ten percent. Oh, so you mean uh, from the perceptions you had, even though we have we have uh, about three independent candidates. If I if I know there is this uh, Ibrahim J S Sane, there yeah. is um, uh, uh, Cham Cham, uh, there is, but Cham, Cham is still no Cham is still on the race. Yeah. Uh, but Lamin Jame and Saibo Saibo have withdrawn. have withdrawn. So we have Lamin we have we have we have. Um, Cham Aruna Cham, I think Aruna Malik Cham, and we have Ibrahim J. Sane. And then we have PPPP candidate Geneva Bar. So, but you are telling me that still uh, those independent and maybe PPP combined, they still cannot command more than what? You, how much? Ten percent. Ten percent. So actually, you will in Brikama you will see that there are two front runners here. Mm. Amadou Jita, I forgot Amadou Jita. Um, on, on, on another independent candidate. Yeah, unfortunately, he is not doing well in our polls. Oh, yeah, it's surprisingly, and and, yes. and, and, and and people are saying that he's put, pulling a lot of weight. In our polls, in your so polls, this he, this explains the fact that in in Gambian politics, mm. you know, you have to have a political base. You know, meaning perhaps you have to have a political party. You know that you align yourself with, because otherwise it becomes difficult. Or independence. I mean, I think the Jawia could explain that. Yeah, you know how many independent candidates have won in the past. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you know it's quite it's quite limited. Limited. You understand yes. that explains the fact that you know, you know, 
align yourself to the political party helps a lot. Helps so this more, is what the you know the data is also explained to us. Yeah. So clearly in Brikama there are two front runners that is NPP and UDP. Yes. So it is going to be a, a two horse race. Okay. However, mm -hmm. we cannot discount mm -hmm. the role that yes, the by this here, You said here the 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 independent and other parties add unpredictability to the race. Yes, they add unpredictability because yes. you know I mean. <laughs> they are mere present itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, let me give you this example. If you look at those two candidates that have withdrawn, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Saibo, we, Saibo and Lamin Jammeh. Lamin Jammeh, we have had, he has mm -hmm. endorsed the NPP, for example. Yes, he said it. So, I mean, endorsed. you know, you can you can see that kind of, um, you know, lineage has done, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, interestingly, when we started this data collection, yeah. you know, when this news came out, you know, immediately we instructed our, our, our enumerators okay. to, you know, we have to remove okay you know that particular name you know in order to you know open so, it up so that operator oh, you know you okay. understand okay. so you know inf some information came a little bit late, late but yes. we are able to we are on top of things we are yeah. able to factor in Factories. all those things and during our data cleaning yeah. you know we had to remove some of those things like you know those like lime made withdrawn, withdrawn very late and cyber you know cyber you know have withdrawn earlier do you do you realize that cyber and ibrahim jesani actually belong to one and the same group I mean, yeah, so to me, perhaps maybe that is, you know, to me it is like um, a little bit favoring the NPP candidate. Okay. So, I mean, you know, making it too tight in this case, mm -hmm. you understand, explain the fact that this 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 race for Brikama is still open. Okay. okay. Still but, open. But well, meanwhile, uh, those who contacted, uh, majority of them, well, not not quite bigger, yeah. but then 23% of them says Yankuba um, Davo leads. Uh, in the in the likely uh, candidate and, to and, win. And, and, and only one less than that said city and you said uh, people intending to vote for cities is, is also quite substantial yeah and if you look at uh, the UDP candidate for example you know try to look at our data mm -hmm. you realize that you know in our poll mm -hmm. the UDP have not done well mm -hmm. in the common not yeah. and also in the phonies in yeah, fact in where, where they did better in the phony might be or phony Darrell, but the other phonies yeah you know they have not done well according to our polls as okay. well i mean these are details but they are not captured in our report yes you know but we have you know you details have, that we can di you know, yeah, dissect okay. you know based on distance and even consequences, consequences to see which you know which party you know a or b is doing well, well in other party or, or where okay. you know they are not doing well let's move to base that is the base area council um mohammed sisa the npp candidate leads with 63 percent on the likely to win the UDP candidate for the Danjo has 16% likelihood of winning. 19% of respondents are or cannot predict who is likely to win. The PDOI's candidate, Alaji Karamoture, has 1.7% support on the intention to vote. So, quite significantly, there, mm. it looks like the NPP candidate uh, is, is, is suddenly uh, home and dry. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, looking at these yeah. figures, definitely. These figures I mean, really tell us that uh, no Muhammad Sisa of the NPP, no NPP can do is home and dry. Mm. In fact, we are putting our last Dalasi on the four regions. Oh, really? You know, in the and one of it is Basse. And what is Basse? That, that Basse is going yes. to NPP. NPP. Because of course, you have seen that Sisa has emerged as a strong contender. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, gaining a significant level of support with the yeah. polls indicating. Commanding 60 percent, yeah. you know, of voters' preference. So, you know, as the MPP standard, you know, bear, of course, yeah. you know, Muhammad Jesus has, you know, captured the attention and the trust of the people in Basse. Absolutely. Now, let's go to Janjambore. Is is that not where they call sometimes CRR South? South. This is South. 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 The MPP candidate Suleiman Sawane is likely to win with 62 percent support. The UDP candidate Malik So is perceived to likely win by 35% of respondents. Smaller parties and an independent candidate add diversity to the race. So yeah. even here, it looks like the NPP candidate Suleiman Sawane is uh, almost certainly yeah, home and dry. Yeah, just like in Basse. Mm -hmm. You know, there also in Denjambore, that is CRR South, yeah. NPP is comfortable yeah. in that. Go, and go. and, and we, yeah. we, we conclude that from our pool, yeah. that MPP is going to win in CRR South. Yeah. Now we go to Kerouan administrative area. The NPP candidate Papa Tunkara leads with 37% of likely to win. 35% of respondents are unable to determine the likely winner. 
The UDP candidate, Malamin I. L. Bojang, is perceived the likely candidate to win by 22% of respondents. The GDC candidate, Abdullah Jalo, and an independent candidate, Babu Kebe, have secured smaller percentages on the likely to win. So even here, uh, maybe uh, reduced significantly compared to Basse and Janjambare, but still the NPP candidate uh, has more likely to win in terms of percentage, even though not as big as the previous two. Yeah, because NPP, you know, uh, is 37 yeah. percent. Again, you have to look at the undesired voters as well. It's 35 yes, percent. They said yes. They said 35 percent. So yeah. with UDP 22 percent, yes, it's still not an outright as far as our polls is concerned. Oh yes, you know, yes. for NPP, mm -hmm. yes, so it's yes. still open for grab. Especially you mentioned the independent candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the independent, uh, you know, the GDC. If you look at it, you know, you got four percent. Yeah, you know, quite low. Okay. But the problem here would be. The undecided with 35 percent okay. so if all those things had to be you know sweet to udp yeah they might win they can still win you know, but that is why you know carawan is still, but, uh, yeah. still open but, but likelihood to win there is it's papa tunkara of, of NPP. NPP. yeah all right let's go to the canifing uh, administrative area canifing the udp candidate talib ahmed ben suda is in the lead with 55 percent of respondents perceiving him as the likely candidate to win the mayoral seat in that area the NPP candidate, Bakari Y. Baji, is perceived as the candidate likely to win by only 19% of the respondents. However, 24% of respondents cannot tell who the likely winner will be. So, there's a huge margin. 55% yeah. said Talib yeah. Ahmed Ben Suda, so, and 19% said it's going to be Bakari Y. Baji. The so gap is big, but then there are 24%. Who it, cannot tell it yeah. appears that even the undecided yeah. voters 24 if they add to bakari it's still, still, it's still yeah. yes if, yes so, if you put so. the undecided 24 that's, yeah. that's definitely added not. to 19 of bakari it's yeah. still it's, they still trail yeah. that's not music uh, so, so, um, yeah. canifing is one of the regions mm. or uh, areas where we concluded in our poll that um, their Talib UD, will Talib is going to win. Okay. Because if you look at it, it's quite a huge margin. Yeah. Even all the undecided decided to vote for Bakari, Talib is they, still, going to still win. Talib is still ahead of them. Yeah, so he has a command. He has a command. And it is over 50 percent. Yes, that's what I've seen. 50 percent of the votes, yes. mm -hmm. voters respondents there. All right, Kuntawur. Shehu Jawara, the NPP candidate, is regarded as the likely candidate to win by 35 percent of respondents. The UDP candidate Alaji Silla follows with 22% of respondents reporting that he is likely to win. About 42% of respondents cannot tell who the likely winner is in this area. So, I mean, 30, 35% goes for uh, NPP and 22 for UDP. But then, so a large un, percentage. Undecided, you know, 42, will, will determine who the winner yeah, will be. Yeah, 42%. Just, just like we've seen in Kiawa. It's <laughs> yeah, the same sure. in Kuntaro. Again, we are not making you know, a conclusion in ah, Kuntauro as well. Kuntauro as well. Even mm. though the NPP is leading for those who have decided to vote. Mm. Okay. Mansa Konko, the United Democratic Party candidate, Landing B. Sane, holds 39% support. About 35% of respondents are unable to determine the likely winner. The NPP candidate, Keba Dem, has 25% support on the likely to win, challenging the UDP's dominance in the area. Well, 39% support for landing Sane of the UDP, and um, Keba Dem has 25%. Uh, you still said there are 25% uh, who, how many percent said? Uh, 35. Yes. Yeah. So there, what is yeah. your conclusion? What is your strong impression? A yes. win, a win, scenario, I guess. a win The same for scenario, we are not making any conclusion. <laughs> even though yeah, decided, those decided, decided yeah. you know, yeah. um, landing is I, I said landing B Sane. Yeah. yeah, but we cannot say for sure. Ah, okay. Based on our, because of what the, the large percentage in terms of the undesired voters. Yeah. So we have covered can't, four now. Can't, yeah. We have covered all the eight, and according to the total now, the likely to win it is four for UDP and four for for the NPP. Uh, likely to win uh, four for UDP. That is Banjul, Brikama, uh, Mansa Konko, okay. and KKM. Even though there are these caveats you talk about, uh, undecided yeah. voters here and there. Uh, but say overwhelmingly, um, it is going to be NPP. Canifing, uh, Talib Ben Suda's projections are very impressive and uh, almost unassailable, even if you put the uh, undecided voters. So you have four for UDP, four for uh, NPP in the likelihood perception of voters. Uh, that's, so that's the verdict from there, Yao. 
before we go into other things like local government um, issues. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a very interesting, you know, I mean, thing. But uh, as they have indicated in some of these constituencies, it is definitely the undecided voters who are going to determine who the eventual winner would be, you know, according to this perception here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very, very interesting, definitely. The, yeah. Where do you think the the, the, the harshest criticisms will be for separate <laughs> for this time around. <laughs> Where would they come from? <laughs> well, I know, I mean, for a place like KM, for example, I mean, well, uh, well, I know it's the, definitely not music to the ears of the NPP, NPP so yeah. I don't know well how they are going to this one. You know, okay. but, uh, it's especially, well, especially the projection is so emphatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then they, they, can, they, can, they, they, they can, they can, they have something to shoot that in Basha. They have a commanding it. Oh well, yeah, of course. Basse and Jenya Mure, oh, of, according but to then, the, But then, but then, of course, the NPP. Yeah. But of course, the NPP has made it clear that, uh, I mean, you know, Kanifing is more pricey. Of than course, I mean, for them, Kanifing and Brikama, Brikama Kanifing and Banjul are the biggest prices they would ever, you know, I mean, the, pro uh, the projections seem so, to. I mean, if the projections in those areas even, seem to favor even if they were to lose the rest of the country, but if they win these three, they are satisfied. But I mean, un I mean, unfortunately. The, the, the projection seem to say that those that ones are going yeah. for UDP. That's it. But anyway. Oh, so you, you can expect harsh criticism from the NPP this time <laughs> round. Okay, Mr. Jawara, would you take us through to uh, what are you, what is the election and local government issues? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so, so um, in this section, we look at some of the uh, pertinent issues um, that came up. Uh, in the runoff to to the elections, okay. Uh, for instance, you know, looking at the issue of um, whether the nomination process was uh, was fair, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that you know uh, the same treatment was given. I have not, I have not known of any complaint, did I? Yeah. Was there anything? Well, yeah. So that's perhaps the campaign period now. We are hearing complaints. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and and that resonates really with the. With the perception of voters, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and everyone was fairly treated. Yeah. So a substantial majority of, um, you know, the potential voters that we asked in this pool mm -hmm. uh, believe that um, all the candidates were treated fairly. So that's kudos to yeah. the IEC. Yes. Yes. Uh, on, so, that, on that account. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of you know organizing the mm -hmm. nomination process, you know, the IEC seemed to yeah, have very done well uh, very well, you know, on that. Uh, and I think you know there were even. Uh, some candidates that came out and you know uh, congratulated the IEC, commended the IEC. exactly and commended wow. them you know uh, for uh, ruling out a very transparent um, wow. you know nomination they, they don't process. they don't often get um, <laughs> a recommendation but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah. interesting yes yeah yeah mm. so so we also look looked at um, what uh, potential voters think are the major issues that um, these candidates should address, mm -hmm. you know, in their local government areas, mm -hmm. right? Uh, looking at the issue of um, um, road infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, in particular construction of roads, okay. uh, waste collection, yeah. uh, issues of corruption, um, revenue mobilization, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they w um, the respondents were asked to uh, name at least three things um, that they think are the most important uh, for any candidate to uh, to address right so if you look at the responses mm -hmm. uh, what it shows is that um, people are more concerned with the yeah. issue of uh, road construction, construction yeah and that council should uh, also um, I, I wonder how many of these councils have undertaken road construction in the past yeah I yeah you know but yeah. I know that Talib mentioned that that will be his focus next. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe you know. Um, oh, Lat also Kumba, Lat Kumba, Lat Kumba Road. Yes, yeah, they mentioned yeah. this manifesto yeah. oh, that Lat Kumba Low Road yeah, was constructed. Yeah, yeah. I, so and I'm so in the in the provinces there might be some Tejito roads. Yeah. Uh, that happened. Yeah, but but yeah. your your survey yeah. said uh, people are concerned about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, they think councils should do more, more uh, in terms stuff. of. Um, Road, uh, road construction. Yeah, road constructions. Because they are mandated, I think, from the local uh, government act, you know, to uh, construct or maintain secondary roads. Yeah, yeah. 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 secondary used roads. to call them Tejito roads. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. you observe that, you know, most of the councils, particularly of country, they mm. don't have the resources to mm. don't have resources. Know, undertake such uh, construction work, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's a fair point. And then, uh, to yeah, and then the. Um, yeah. I think after road construction, 
Waste collection? Yes, waste collection. Uh, That's a big issue. issue, you know. In that brick and brick kama and particularly yeah, in brick kama and yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, um, and also community market. So you mean the uh, voters, voters there would, would would like to will will consider this in in going to the in going to the ballot box. They yeah. will they, yeah. they will look at the programs of the candidates and say which one yeah. is more is addressing the the the, 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 the waste problem. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, so surprisingly, we asked about uh, food uh, prices, uh, oh, and food then prices. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whether council can support, mm -hmm. you know, uh, food prices. Yeah, no, whether council can support uh, people to be able to have, you know, uh, something to get a more mm -hmm. stable meal or something like this. Yes. Uh, yeah, but not a lot of people paid attention to oh, yeah. uh, to that and that's yeah. important <laughs> yeah that's important. but also if you look at the mandate of councils you know uh, it doesn't actually include then should, should give food supplies to people. Uh, exactly ah, apart from you know supporting agriculture uh, which but, indirectly but people of course who are can help or they are poor or have been affected by some disaster yeah, yeah. the council to come to yeah, their yeah, head yeah yeah but um perhaps they are looking at you know um the core mandates mm. you know of of, of, of council, council right uh, and that is waste collection you know taking care of our community markets yeah. uh, as well as you know um maintaining or building secondary uh, secondary roads Good. Uh, yeah. So I think in Kanifing this is interesting because yeah. you know you have Talib, for instance, uh, being judged almost by everyone. Even yeah. you know uh, his um, candidates, you know that are competing him for 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 that seat. Yeah. You know acknowledge commended that his ballot program. Exactly that yeah. he has done very well. You yeah. know in terms of in the terms ballot of the, uh, and the ballot project. And if you listen to some of his campaign, also yeah. he has been talking a lot about you know the fact that his next agenda is going to be roads and, uh, uh, roads and, and, and about like uh, transport system exactly right? yeah so i think perhaps voters are you know paying attention to to that in in, in kind of thing no. uh, and and perhaps that is the reason why you know uh, they think he, he, got a, he got a high rate of uh, exactly projection. exactly yeah yeah, the, so on the okay, you can yes, go ahead. I was going to go to the an establishment of the commission of inquiry to investigate councils. You said the opinion poll reveals that a high proportion of respondents, about thirty three percent, viewed the timing of the establishment of the commission as extremely inappropriate, while a smaller percentage, that is nine percent, found the timing as extremely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Some respondents were unsure about the appropriateness of the timing. So. Mm -hmm. Basically, you are saying here that those you contacted, 33% of them said, okay, the commissions may have uh, good motives, but then the timing is bad. Yeah. Why did they say the timing yeah. was bad? Yeah. So, so actually, we did not ask them why they think the timing <laughs> was bad. Uh, okay. But, you know, uh, you know, when the commission was uh, set up, yeah. uh, there were a lot of talks, yeah. you know, regarding uh, whether the intention was genuine. Yes, uh, yes. Whether the, the opposition said right. it's a witch hunt because yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. most of the councils were run by yeah, yeah. their politicians. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the respondents have a different opinion. Actually, mm. they think um, you know the uh, setting up of a commission mm. to do an mm. inquiry it's, it's, or it's, it's investigate. Quite okay. Exactly, it's quite okay. Uh, so whereas yeah. a lot of people don't dispute. Um, uh, the decision to do it, but the timing is the problem. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So that Time. seems to be the message, you know, the that uh, people do not, um, or majority of people do not disagree, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the fact that it's it's good to investigate um, um, councils, but they think, you know, the timing of this one mm -hmm. uh, was not was not appropriate. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and and that could be because. You but know, you said you didn't ask them why. Yeah. But, but is it not the case that they thought perhaps selection time? In which case they are definitely sympathetic to the opposition who said uh, that the timing is calculated so that they can discredit them. Yeah. Uh, the commission, I mean, they believe the commission is going to discredit their candidates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in before before the, I mean before the elections. But yeah. Um, yeah. But then you want to say that everybody agreed that the purpose might be yeah, meaningful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for us, that is our message. Okay, you know, okay. I mean, different assumptions and 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 you know uh, opinions can be given yeah. uh, with regards to why you know uh, respondents think the timing was wrong mm. 
uh, and it depends on the viability of you know the opinion no. uh, in terms of the circumstance uh, uh, that was in existence at the time. The, the commission actually right. started. Yeah, well, I think you had some yeah, one or yeah. two thoughts about that. What have you seen so far? Do you believe? Yeah, I mean, they, actually, they have just had one sitting as okay. yet, and, okay. uh, and that sitting was the permanent secretary, uh, the Ministry of Local Government, oh, okay. who was on the chair, and then. Well, he was trying to give them a background information about as to what lead to the, the difference. I mean, well, the, the administration of the councils, I mean, through the ministry and other mm -hmm. things. So, I mean, it was very, very interesting, and I'm sure it's going to be. A, 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 I mean, especially when they, they start interviewing, you know, the mayors and the chairpersons okay. and okay. their officials. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of revelations. It shows you that definitely mm -hmm. things have not been going as they were supposed to have gone. Okay. You know, in the way uh, the this uh, relationship between the ministry and the various uh, local government um, areas. Ah, okay. So that is basically the main key takeaways. Uh, before we close, uh, uh, Damfa and uh, Jawara, what more uh, uh, are we, are we, have we left as far as the Well, let's um, <laughs> also find out. I mean, because uh, in an election period, every uh, week means a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is, is it likely that, you know, this perception and these uh, yeah. indicators are to going to, I yeah. mean, by the time the elections are there, it's one week ago. Yeah. One week ago. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, while he was asking, are you coming that up, are you that coming is exactly up what came to mind. Are you coming <laughs> up with an, and, with an update? And, yeah, so we have indicated that um, also in the dissemination that we had this morning, mm -hmm. uh, that this poll was done last week, mm -hmm. uh, and that is two weeks before the elections, elections right yes. and we know in election period even things are very is fluid even right. one day is exactly. full. It's, it's, it's long yeah. enough so things are very fluid and you know um, things can change even you know in the very last minute uh, before people go to the to the pools okay. uh, so i think this results should be digested with some of those caveats uh, uh, in in mind yeah uh, so that we don't also uh, over you know, um, I, I don't know. Of course, the politicians, the, <laughs> exactly. politi the politicians would say, yeah, we well, are not over too excited, yes, you know, yes, yes. with uh, with some of the findings. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe the, the other thing to, to add, if you look at it, we just like I've said earlier, we have definitely stretched ourselves because mm. the idea is the results should be out at least a week, a week before, before election. the election. Yeah. And, least, you know, thank God, even though Dr. Jara had to sleep in the office, you know, <laughs> yesterday, but I mean, I think it, it worth it. And, and of course, at Cyprus, our office is open. Now, know, and and of course, your, your history of being accurate uh, actually lend critics to the fact that uh, this is this this perhaps is the Bible. Is 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 the is, 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 the, the, is uh, anything to go by? Yeah. It is going to be the Cyprus result. Anyway, I'm sure uh, you're going to have a lot of reactions. We hope, of course, there will be a lot of headlines and mm -hmm. uh, opinions about it. But mm -hmm. fantastic job so far. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, definitely. we would definitely. like to do it more often, but also this this exercises are resources. Oh yeah, I, I saw at the corner <laughs> of your a corner of your yeah. documents that yeah. uh, NED National Endowment for Democracy must have been your key supporter. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they, they support us. In fact, we are currently doing a three-year project with them, okay. specifically on local government. And okay. the idea of that project is, I mean, uh, we are using a citizen report card. Mm -hmm. You know, to not uh, to assess this, you know the you know the service condition in the different area councils in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to bring together. The whole idea is to bring together the service providers, you know, the beneficiaries. Those are the communities together to build on a consensus on some of the issues they have. You know, I mean, and also try to you know provide some kind of training for the area council as well. We understand some of the things that they, they you know they did not do. It's not because you know they don't want to work because of lack of resources, for example. So this CRC survey has on a lot of things, you know, you know, based on the local government act, we're trying to, you know, we are able to get, I mean, different, there are different areas of intervention and gauge them using citizen report card because it's a social auditing tool that you want to use. I see. You know, at the end of the day, the whole idea is to improve services. That's our intention. That's and part of that project where we have this uh, local government election. Yeah, uh, and, and also let me add, I think we have been leaving this out, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But this is the first time also that Cyprus mm -hmm. uh, individually has contributed, okay. right, to uh, to the conduct of the polls, yeah. oh, right? Uh, yeah. So they've also put in, apart from the human resources, you know, uh, a good amount of financial resources yeah. to support this exercise because um, they think, you know, uh, these opinion polls are very 
uh, are very important uh, in terms of you know sharing uh, the views of people on electoral issues. Uh, so, so that is uh, yeah, important. I, I, I think, think also, like on the ad, our board also has a proof. I mean, we don't only want to concentrate on elections. Mm. You know, yes, you want to do opinion right. poll on many right. issues, yeah. mm. on the economy, on everything you can think of. Yeah. How, you know, everyday work of life. Yeah. So, Sephras will be out, definitely, not only on politics, but of course, other issues of national interest yes, as well. On education, for example, yeah. Yeah. interest, security, and other things. Yeah. Right. Lavin Damfa, Executive Director of uh, Sephras. Dr. Hamidu Jawara, also a member of the team, Dema Ali Jau, veteran journalist. Thank you all for being on the branch. This has been the special branch, of course, on the outcome of the opinion survey on the local government elections for mayors and chairmanship happening on Saturday. Thank you very much, Sepras, and thank you for all being with us on the branch. We'll be back on Saturday with election matters, of course, because the governments will go to the polls to elect chairman and mayors for all the local government areas. Until then, goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you very Let me finish with her. I am not here to sit. I received an alert for my bank. It's like you made a mistake. The amount transferred to my account is different from the amount on the invoice I issued to you. No, there is no mistake. We deducted 10% as withholding tax. Withholding what? In fact, what is withholding tax? As you just told me, withholding tax on contract payments is a deduction from payment made to contractors for carrying out work supply of labor or materials and or provision of technical or consultancy services. 10% is withhold for Gambian residents and 15% for non-Gambian residents. The contractees remit the amount withhold to the nearest GRA tax office in the month of deduction or on or before the 15th of the following month. What's my interest? You will be issued a certificate which you should take to GRA when you go to pay your quarterly and annual tax. What happens to the 10% deducted for my invoice. That 10% will be less from your tax liability. So it means the 10% is an advance payment of my tax liability. And I only pay the difference of my tax due for my quarterly and annual payment. Correct, sir. Buba, you should have told me this. We all know for any meaningful development to take place in the country, we must pay our taxes. And on time. This information is from the Gambia Revenue Authority. For more detailed information about your withholding tax obligation, please visit any of the nearest GRA offices. The Gambia Revenue Authority, collecting revenue for national development. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, 
A1C and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.